Very good. All right. Um, Welcome, everybody. Uh, I'm chairman of uh, British Cave Research Association, so I, I just add my welcome to Andy's. And I'm hoping that what we've got here is a, a, a good selection of cavers uh, who are interested in cave exploration and cave science, also some scientists who are interested in caves, and perhaps some people who have just come along to, uh, to find out a little bit more uh, about uh, what, we, uh, what we do. Uh, my title is British Britain's Limestone Caves, an Ever-Growing Resource. And my thesis at the start is that caves are a really important resource, both for recreation. We have show caves, which make a, a major contribution to our economy. There are outdoor pursuits. Uh, many, many people have been introduced by, to caves by outdoor pursuits. And, of course, there are lots of us who do this as a sport, uh, and we make a contribution to the economy through that as well. And caves are important for science, and there'll be lectures through the weekend showing you some of those areas of science uh, that we're highlighting uh, in Britain. What I wanted to do uh, then is to provide an introduction to that resource base, tell you about Britain's limestone areas and caves, and I'm focusing more on the less well-known areas because the better well-known are with subject of separate talks. Another part of my thesis is that when we think about resources, many of them decrease over time. We use them up. There are some that are fixed. On a human time scale, we might think of the cave resources being fixed because caves aren't being formed in geological time. But the number of caves and the length of explored passage has grown year on year as a result of new discoveries. And I'll just show you the pace of those discoveries. So this is our resource base. These are the carbonate rock outcrops uh, that contain karst. And one of the amazing things about Britain is that despite its small land area, we're only about 229,000 square kilometers, we've got an incredible range of carbonate karsts. They extend from the, uh, the north coast uh, of Scotland, does the pointer work? Mm, yes, there it is, there it is. So we've got caves right up on the north coast of Scotland, uh, right down uh, in the south of Devon. Uh, we've got caves over in the west uh, in Pembroke, uh, and we've got caves over in the east as well. So basically, uh, a great geographical coverage. In terms of geological coverage, we've got quaternary freshwater carbonates, we've got limestones and dolostones in the Paleogene, the Cretaceous, the Jurassic, the Permian, the Carboniferous, the Devonian, the Silurian, the Ordovician, and the Cambrian. And we've even got Cambrian to Neoproterozoic, what we used to call the Precambrian metacarbonates. I would argue we've got a greater time range of carbonate outcrops per unit area than anywhere else on Earth, although sadly, uh, they don't all have caves in them. Now, I'm going to start with uh, caves in Britain's youngest carbonate rocks. These are quaternary freshwater carbonates, and these are perhaps the least visited caves uh, in, uh, in Britain. And it struck me uh, last night as, as I was thinking about caves and cave exploration that less people have been in these caves uh, probably over the last 10 years than climbed Everest this year. So it's, a, it's an interesting thought, that, in terms of original exploration. So there are two areas uh, with caves. Uh, there's Lathkill Resurgence Cave here and Bubble Springs Caves here. This is Lathkilldale in the heart of the Peak District. And Lathkill Resurgence Cave is 110 metres of cave. For most of the year, that cave is hidden by a waterfall. It's accessible only under exceptional drought, uh, and uh, the entrance is a bit restricted, uh, just there. Uh, but once you get in, you're actually caving through a, a tufa deposit that's around 100, 125,000 years old. So these are really young caves, and they're caves that are formed by construction, not by erosion. The Bubble Springs Cave was found uh, more recently, and it's accessed via uh, a mine shaft just here because the old lead miners drove a, a sough through it. This is uh, the river. Uh, Jenny's feet are next to the shaft. When we look down the shaft, uh, you might think that the water level was there, but it's not. 
Uh, the water is 6.9 metres down on that, and the cave's 9 metres down. Now, that means that under those conditions, the cave was full of water. But for part of the year, we can actually get into it. And again, it's a quite remarkable cave. You're actually going through a tufa deposit. And uh, again, some slides of it here, taken by Andy's son, Rob. Uh, and that bit just there is where the lead miners excavated through. So this is an extremely young, very rare cave, very interesting scientifically. When we move uh, back in time uh, to the Cretaceous, the carbonates of the chalk are our most extensive carbonate uh, rocks in Britain. And many people have treated them as being non-karstic. But actually, when you look in detail, we've got lots of surface karst landforms. We've got dolines, we've got dry valleys. We've got some of the largest springs in Britain. And there's abundant evidence of conduit flow, but strangely, very few caves. Very few, but there are some. And this is Beachy Head Cave, the longest chalk cave in Britain. A uh, fascinating cave system uh, that was once inland when the, the cliff was out here, that would have just been a loop uh, uh, of this phreatic. And as the coast has cut back, uh, we exposed those two entrances there, thanks to Andy uh, for that photo. So here we've got 350 odd kilometers, uh, meters, I wish it was kilometers. <laughs> yeah, that would be great, wouldn't it? Yay! 357 meters of cave. And yet elsewhere in the chalk, so far we've found very little. And that is one of our mysteries, because we've got big springs, uh, as you can see here. And there are some caves. Uh, we found that one only in 2015. Yattendon Chalk Cave, unfortunately, doesn't go very far. Let's go back further to the Jurassic. Jurassic carbonates crop out from Cleveland uh, right across the Midlands to Somerset and Dorset. There are three areas with well-developed exocasts, that's surface landforms. Uh, up here, uh, and here, and here. And in the, in the, the, the Karelian, uh, the top one, uh, the limestone's 100 to 150 metres thick. We've got 72 caves uh, with 3,300 metres of passage. Not a lot, uh, but I'll show you one slide in a minute that shows how impressive they are. Sadly, in the Lincolnshire limestone, we've got no caves known at the moment. But in the middle Jurassic, the Cotswolds, this part has got no dissolutional caves, although there are crevice caves. And yet when we go down into Portland, right down here, that tiny little blob there has got 30 caves uh, with uh, 2,200 uh, metres uh, of, uh, of passage there. Now, this is the most extensive cave of dissolutional origin in the Jurassic, uh, the Excalibur pot, Jenga pot system. Anybody interested in that should see a recent issue of Descent where there was an absolutely super article describing the exploration. Uh, and the, the shots that I've got in here uh, are to illustrate the nice parts of the cave. There are some fairly squalid ones as well. Um, but I think the key here is that you've got a river coming down, providing us with point recharge, uh, and we've got a well-developed cave system in there. And the water all comes out here uh, at, uh, at Bog Hall Rising. Now, I said that it was the cave, uh, the stream, that might be a key there. And yet, when we go to the Lincolnshire limestone, it's another puzzle, because we've got big streams coming down and sinking, a stream sink here, uh, another stream sink just here. We've got big springs. This is a, an artesian spring here. And yet, this is about as big as the conduits get. So it's a disappointing area uh, in terms of accessible caves, but certainly there are conduits there and there's cast. Although there are a few solution caves, what the Jurassic does have is gull caves. Crevice caves is the technical word. We often call them gulf caves or windy pits. And again, a, a little mystery. Why are there more of those in the Jurassic than in all the other British carbonates combined? Uh, two examples, uh, an opportunity to pay tribute to Charlie Self, uh, who did uh, a lot of work on these gold caves. Uh, this is in, uh, in Box, uh, and uh, this is uh, up in uh, uh, the, uh, the North Yorkshire area, uh, and uh, uh, Miss... Mr. Uh, Sparkler's glory hole, splendid name, 80 metres long and 30 metres high. 
So uh, again, a fairly impressive bit of cave passage. The Magnesian limestone is another limestone that's got very few caves in it, uh, just 68 caves uh, over that whole length. Uh, look at the size of the Peak District, look at the dales, and look at how much limestone we've got there. Uh, again, just over uh, 2,000 metres of cave. And the one I've singled out uh, for attention is Crestwell Crags. Uh, and I, I was going to show these slides, but I'm going to go through them very quickly because I happen to have had a sneak at Andrew Chamberlain's presentation, and he's going to talk about them, uh, and he knows a lot more than I do. But basically, this is a, an archaeological site with cave art. So we'll move on rapidly to the Carboniferous. These are our most extensive cavernous carbonate outcrops. They're limestones, a few dollar stones, early Carboniferous, and we term them the Carboniferous limestone. We've overlain by late Carboniferous sediments, sandstones and mudstones, uh, a few limestones in the dales. And uh, we've got six areas, the North Pennines and the Yorkshire Dales, the Peak District, North Wales, South Wales, Forest of Dean, and the Mendips. Now, they're all going to be the subject of their own talks, so I shall say no more about the, the actual caves there, but just highlighting one aspect of the science, uh, and that is that those casts show a progression along what's called the interstratal axis uh, of uh, Klimchuk and Ford's model, from deep-seated cast through subjacent cast to entrenched cast, uh, and we're moving towards denuded cast. To illustrate that, then, the Peak District was once a deep-seated hypergenic cast, but it's now reached the state of being a denuded cast. In other words, all of the cap rocks have been removed. So we've got one big area of limestone with nothing over the top of it. Uh, no basement rocks, uh, because the, uh, the sequence is thick, up to 1,800 metres. Um, I'm only going to put two slides on from the Peak District, because the point I want to make there is that there are many large vein cavities, and they probably began to form in the Carboniferous, making them Britain's oldest caves. Um, two examples from the exploration. This is Pete O'Neill in one of the early trips uh, up the Cliff Cavern. Uh, and again, there's a reason for, for putting this on. Uh, this is Ford's Cavern, named for Trevor Ford, the late Trevor Ford. Uh, and that was first entered in 85, uh, not surveyed until 2013. And these are vein cavities uh, of considerable age. Go down to southern Wales. Uh, the north crop is what's called a subjacent cast. That means that the rock's locally breached by erosion, just over a minor part of its thickness. But then the limestones are dipping under here, and they're forming actually a deep-seated cast. It's not evident at the surface. The soluble rock's not exposed. Uh, Andy Farrant is going to say more about that area, and I think Mike might as well. So no more on that one now. Um, the Yorkshire Dales are an example of an entrenched cast. So this is where we've got a, a relatively thin limestone, only 100 to 200 metres thick. It's pretty incredible to think about that when we think of all the caves that there are there. It's entrenched by deep valleys that have unroofed the basement rocks. So down here, these are the basement rocks underneath the limestone. These are the rocks over the top of the limestone, and the white area is the limestone in between. Uh, and that is our prime uh, caving area in terms of number of caves. The Devonian carbonates of southwest England, uh, Peter Glanville say more about these, but very briefly, uh, it's a small area. Uh, it's mainly buried cast. It's mainly ancient cast that's been covered over. What we've got on the top is a fluvial landscape with few surface cast landforms. But there are over 150 caves, uh, of which the most famous uh, is Kent's Cavern, a very important archaeological cave, um, with large relict phreatic passages that have now been truncated. And moving uh, back in time to the Silurium, um, the story again here is one where we've got carbonate-dominated formations, um, mainly in the, the West Midlands and the Welsh borders, but very little documentation, either on the surface or the underground. Mick Day wrote a, a paper in Cave and Cast Science what he calls a restricted fluviocast landform, uh, landscape. And 
I suspect that there may be paleocast features within there which we've still really got to get to grips with, and perhaps even some relic cave passages. Um, needed something to put on. Uh, this is the Dudley area, uh, and I know that the Dudley would want at least some form of a mention. Uh, so basically, this is the mines uh, which have got abundant speleothem uh, growth down in there. We go to the top of Scotland, uh, and uh, we've got Cambro Ordovician carbonates. These are Dines dollar stones. Uh, Ivan Young, who provided, the <coughs> provided these photos, uh, is, uh, is going to talk more about this area. Um, but again, you know, it, it's, it's a splendid area. Uh, Smoo Cave uh, is one of the most northerly caves in mainland Britain. And the oldest caves in terms of rock are Delradian supergroup metacarbonates, so they are late Precambrian, Neoproterozoic through to Cambrian. And they form a stripe cast right across Scotland uh, from the southwest to the northeast. And within that, uh, we have small catchments, but both active and relict caves. Uh, and uh, Ivan may well mention these as well, but these are uh, some of the caves uh, in those carbonate rocks more down in this area down here. So that was a real whistle stop through of our different areas. The question now is how much cave is there in Britain? Where is it? And how fast is the resource growing? Andy last night threw away the figure that we might have only found half of the caves in Britain. Now I'm not quite sure where he got that from, um, but here are some actual statistics. The way this was done was uh, for the, in fact, for the, for the Nature Conservancy Council back in 1988, they asked how much cave was actually within the SSSIs. And that made us realize we didn't actually know how many caves there were in Britain. Uh, in those pre-internet days, the only way to find out uh, was that I, uh, I had Paul Hardwick as a, an assistant and he basically, we went out and we bought a copy of every guidebook that there was, uh, all of Tony Oldham's, uh, everything we could get our hands on, uh, and through various copies of Descent uh, for more recent things. And we basically said, right, well, just how many caves are there in each area and how long are they? So th the, these two columns, there and here, that's what we reckoned was how much cave was in Britain. Now, what we really mean, that's not how much cave, but that's how much cave had been explored, surveyed, and documented. So you can see that as of the end of 1989, uh, we reckoned that there were 2,710 caves, and the total length uh, was about 632 kilometers. Now, uh, I thought I'd try and repeat that for, for Eurospelio. Um, and uh, life is, in one sense, easier, but in another sense, more difficult. Because each of the regions has now got uh, a cave database. And the people who are managing those databases were kind enough to let me have copies of their databases. So it should have been easy to add things up. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the problem of having databases uh, is that people just put information into them. So many of those areas, we've got lots and lots of digs are recorded as being caves, and they're mainly less than four meters in length. So they increase the numbers by many hundreds. S similarly, in, uh, in some of the coastal areas, both Devon and Mendip, there are hundreds of sea caves, uh, often very small, formed by mechanical processes, and to include those in the list would make it an invalid comparison. So essentially, I had to go through those databases and basically cut out the ones that, in my opinion, uh, and it was my opinion, that it, it, it's as simple as that, didn't fit with the criteria. So this is what I've come up with, and I think it's the, the best estimate we've got uh, of the number of caves and the total cave length. The total cave length was tricky as well uh, because in some of the databases, uh, individual parts of cave systems were listed separately uh, and also together. 
Um, so, for example, in, in the Peak District, uh, many of you will know the Peak Speedwell Cave System. Uh, and that's, it can be listed separately as Peak Cavern and Speedwell Cavern, or together as a, as a cave. But this is pretty well what, what we've got. So when we go down it, these are the numbers and the total cave length. But particularly interesting is how they've increased. So if we look at Devon's gone up by 70%, Mendip, we've got a 250% increase in the number of caves. The North Pennines are 53%, the Peak District 45, Scotland 46, North Wales 350% and South Wales 340%. In other words, those are the areas where we've got many, many more caves. Now, whether that's because those guidebooks under-recorded what was known then, or whether we've really discovered so many more caves, uh, I'll leave it for you to decide. Uh, but overall, we've nearly doubled the number of known caves. When we look at the cave lengths, they've also increased dramatically, and especially, uh, again, uh, in South Wales, uh, where we've nearly had a doubling uh, of the cave length. So there's a really significant increase in there, however, however we take those numbers, uh, and it will be uh, uh, interesting to see how we go forward. I'll come to that in a moment. Just by age of rock, um, this is really here just to show you the dominance of the Carboniferous Limestone. 88% of total caves and 95% of our cave length is in the Carboniferous Limestone. But actually, when you divide it off in terms of average length, in other words, that's the total divided by the number of caves, the, the difference is actually not as great as you might think. Um, so the average length is just over 200 metres, uh, whereas in the Devonian it's 124, and then down uh, in those figures there. So I, I've had my, my five-minute warning, um, so I'm just going to come through to my last slide with just some final thoughts. So between 1989 and 2016, the length of cave in Britain grew on average by 12.7 kilometres a year. And if the discoveries continue at the same rate, we should pass the 1,000-kilometre mark by the end of 2018. So I think I need to repeat this exercise sometime in 2019 uh, to see whether, uh, whether we've really got there. Those discoveries, though, uh, and the cavers in this room will know this, but perhaps others don't, they're a common result of a huge amount of effort by dedicated digging teams. Uh, and I did think as I was putting this together, I wonder how many caver hours of effort went into each additional kilometre of passage. Um, and I know some of the digging teams actually record that, uh, and it would be fascinating to, uh, to actually have some of those figures published. Not forget divers, uh, of course, because divers have made a significant contribution to finding new cave. Digging also requires removal of rock and sediment. How many tens or hundreds of tonnes of sediment have been moved out of previously sediment passage to gain that extension. So uh, a lot for us to, to think about there. And then finally, I, I do have to acknowledge people. I've mentioned Paul Hardwick. He compiled the first national database. Those regional cave database coordinators, people who do actually a huge amount of work, and their work is often unacknowledged. So uh, a big thank you to Cookie for Mendip, Wayne Sheldon for Peak, Paul Squire uh, for the Northern Area, Roger King for Devon, Martin Laverty for Wales, Ivan Young for Scotland, and thank you all.